good morning uh, i hope everyone is able to see my whiteboard okay last section uh, we discussed about uh, uh, static segment dynamic segment frame format and uh, how the static segment uh, uh, in static segment how flex ray is sending the message and you know, how it is sending in the dynamic segment such uh, details we have discussed in the last section today i will discuss mainly about the synchronization topic how to uh, synchronize the flex ray nodes how the synchronization mechanism is working as we discussed in earlier section flex ray is a flex ray is a synchronous protocol so uh, every nodes in that uh, network should have a sense of uh, global time it means uh, every node for example if you have connected some uh, four nodes in the flex ray network this four nodes should have a uh, should have the same common understanding about the should have the common understanding about the time uh, every all nodes should have the same time should have a common understanding about the time otherwise it will not sync up uh, it will be difficult for sending the message so uh, yeah that's the most important thing in the flex ray communication uh, every node should have get the uh, global time sensor means everyone should have the same understanding about the time okay so how this is achieving uh, in flex ray protocol that's where that's what we are going to discuss <clears throat> uh, for this purpose uh, uh, we are sending a dedicated frames in static segment eh? that dedicated frame is known as a sync frame sync frame synchronization frames eh? these frames are dedicated for the synchronization purpose these frames will be sending in the static segment eh? we'll send it in the static segment okay static segment we'll send this uh, frames in a static segment okay so this uh, if you okay if you consider a flex ray network network uh, maybe some 15 number of consider let it be with the 15 number of nodes present in the flex ray network 15 number of nodes means 15 ecus present in the network then uh, there will be some dedicated uh, sync nodes will be available the purpose of single node is these nodes are these ecus are responsible for the synchronization these ecus will send the synchronization message to the network so um, uh, at least some four five four to five ecus will be allotted for as a synchronization time minimum two is required eh? but uh, it will not be like this uh, in generally we will see in ecus uh, flex ray network eh? uh, if it is a 15 uh, or uh, 20 is used connect in the network at least some seven to eight uh, nodes act as a synchronization nodes so it's very clear that uh, what is a synchronization order this synchronization node is means uh, this uh, node means a particular issue that is is responsible for the synchronization this is how it is uh, doing uh, responsible for the signal this is will send a synchronization frame in the network okay so uh, every is use in the network okay i'll clear this drawing so uh, every issue in this network all the nodes in the network uh, should should be aware i will get a synchronization frame in this particular time so this information is already available for all issues i will repeat all the issues for example if you have a uh, 15 ECUs in a network. Uh, ECU 1, ECU 3, ECU 5, ECU 7 act as a synchronization node. So ECU 2, uh, 4, 6, uh, uh, then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is, these are the synchronization, uh, synchronization nodes. Uh these nodes are the uh, general nodes okay so uh, okay uh, this node one 
for example the node one is sending a I already explained how it is working in the static segment. Static segment in status, if you consider a communication cycle, this communication cycle we can split into static segment, dynamic segment, then network ideal time. Okay, so in the static segment, how it will be sending in static segment is you will divide into number of slots. One slot will be allocated for a particular ECU. In that uh, particular slot, only that ECU will send the message. Similarly, another slot will be allotted for the another ECU, like this. So uh, again, uh, also I explained the status segment when we are discussing about the status segment. A particular ECU can own many number of slots. For example, you consider the status segment. The status segment is divided into one, two, three, four, like this number of segments you, you divide into number of slot. For example, ECU A can own this slot also. It can have this slot. It can own both slot. So in both slot, ECU A will send a message. Uh, ECU B sending the message here. ECU can say C can send C or also ECU C if you allot ECU C to this slot also. So a particular ECU in this case you see ECU A is owning can have more number of slots. ECU B is taking only one slot. So who is deciding this? This is a, this will decide by the person who designed this network. So how many uh, slot can in a particular communications in a particular communication cycle in a single communication cycle one particular ECU need how many number of slots that will decide by a uh, uh, network designer. Okay, so uh, yeah, so ECU A will not send a data in the in this particular slot because this slot is allotted for the slot to uh, ECU B. ECU B will never send the data in the here and here or here anywhere because the ECU B is, uh, has allotted only this particular section. So ECU B is already aware about uh, my slot is slot 2. I should send the data only in the slot 2. I should not send the data in this here. here. This awareness will have for the ECU B. So how ECU B is getting this awareness? Uh, ECU B uh, how uh, is ECB also sync with uh, ECB have a sense of global time? Not only ECUSB, all ECUs in the network will have a sense of global time. Everyone will uh, run with the same time, same uh, sync. It will run in a, it will move in a synchronization. Day. Okay, no, that's why we are discussing with the, how this is doing. Okay. So uh, what we are is okay. So uh, yeah. So 15 number of ECUs present. Eh? ECU one and three five seven is act as a synchronization nodes. Eh? A synchronization ECU. Then what will happen? ECU one will send a particular mess, synchronization message. Eh? This is called a sync frame. I said already sync frame. This ECU one will send a sync frame. Every ECU in the network will receive that particular frame. The two will receive, three will receive, uh, for uh, five will receive, six will receive, eight. Will. Everyone will receive that particular frame. So all the ECUs in the network is aware about uh, ECU one will send a synchronization frame in this particular time. Similarly, when ECU three sending a synchronization frame, all the ECU three, for example, yeah, you are allotting ECU one here, ECU three you are allotting. So ECU one will send the synchronization frame in this particular slot. ECU three sending the synchronization in this slot. So ECU why we are sending multiple synchron multiple ECUs are sending it that we'll discuss later. We'll come to know while discussing. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, all the ECUs in the network should will be already aware about that ECU one will send a synchronization message in this particular time. Similarly, ECU three will send a synchronization message in this particular time. ECU five will send a synchronization message in the particular time. ECU seven will send a synchronization message in a particular time. All the ECUs in the network is aware about that. This is already pre-programmed by the network designer. Everyone is aware about that. So how these things will work out, we'll discuss it. So now I will clear this. Clear all right. OK. 
Okay, so yeah. Uh, so how this is uh, working? How this uh, global? How every issue get get this global time sense? Okay. So uh, this thing already we discussed. Not this thing. This communication timing hierarchy we already discussed in static segment. Eh? Still I'm repeating. Okay. Uh, so if you take a communication cycle, flexor communication we can divide into the number of cycles. Cycle one. And cycle two, cycle three, cycle four, cycle five, like this, we can divide into number of cycles, flexor communication. Take a one single cycle, cycle one. We are taking a cycle one. If you consider cycle one, cycle one, if you consist of, I said already, if you take a one single cycle, it can have a static segment, it can have a dynamic segment, it can have a symbol window. It can have a network ideal time, but minimum one status segment and a NIT is necessary. These are optional. Can have, cannot. It may have, it may not. But static and a network ideal time, NIT, is mandatory. Ne? Uh, if you consider a particular communication cycle these two things are minimum two segment will be mandatory status segment and network edit. so communication cycle we can uh, divide into uh, flexor communication divided into we can divide into many number of communication cycles okay then communication cycle again you can divide maximum communication cycle is 64 0, 0 to 63 communication cycle so it's possible after that again it will reset so there will be a cycle counter you see inside in the fra uh, frame th that we already discussed while discussing the uh, framing of the um, static segment okay the, i'm not uh, uh, repeating that eh? so yeah so we can say that uh, so static segment network ideal time these are the uh, minimum two sections will be there in a communication cycle okay in a single communication cycle okay this static segment day further divided into slot like this you can slot one slot two slot three like this you can so as i mentioned ecu a can on this ecu b can on this ecu c can on this. again this slot if you want to allow for this year it's possible if you want to allow this for the ecu d yes possible if you want to allow this for the ecu c yes it's possible. it means that's what i said eh? one point of particular ec can have more than number more it can on or w n it can on more than one slots it's possible so we can uh, yeah so static segment i am divide, dividing into the many number of slots huh? okay uh, yeah if you take a static segment i'm dividing into the slot okay how this uh, uh, timing is related timing hierarchy it's related that's what i'm going to discuss here okay so assume that one communication cycle you take it as a one millisecond is the one communication cycle so in that one millisecond time uh, okay take it as a one uh, not one millisecond take it as a uh, 1.5 millisecond is the one communication cycle so in that one millisecond you have used for the static segment day eh? 0.5 millisecond you have i'm taking as an example this is not the actual figures eh? 0.5 millisecond is used for the uh, network ideal time okay Okay, uh, yeah. one second, eh? something happened to the mouse. Eh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Share. Mm. 
Ayo. One moment. Eh? Okay. Uh, share. I will go here. Share. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and now we have where we stop. Okay, I think we discussed that till. Okay, assume that a, a total communication cycle is considered as a 1.5 millisecond. So in that you have allotted a 1 millisecond for the static and 0.5 millisecond for the network ideal time. Okay, then I'll clear this. So you have allotted one millisecond for the static and the 0.5 millisecond for the network credit time. So this one millisecond is for the static segment, okay? So static segment. Okay, so uh, we have already discussed the static segment is divided into the many number of slots. Okay, static segment is divided into the many number of slots. So, um, uh, assume that uh, you have divided into the, uh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, static segment we are divided into the uh, many number of slots. So this one millisecond time you can divide into the as many number of slots. So take it as a hundred microsecond. Eh? One slot is ICC, let it be taken as a hundred microsecond. Then you can divide in one millisecond is the one uh, static static slot, uh, static segment. This you are divided into a hundred microsecond. Like this, 10 slot. Correct. So uh, each slot has a size of 100 microsecond. Okay, so I'm calling uh, another name is called the micro tick and a macro tick. Two parameters I am going to define. Macro tick and micro tick. Okay, what is micro tick and macro tick? That's what I'm going to discuss. Uh, okay, so uh, I will define this uh, slot. I will say this slot length in terms of the macro tick, for example. So I would say uh, uh, like uh, 100 macro tick equal to one slot. I'm defining like this. 100 macro tick is equal to one slot. So we know that uh, one millisecond is our communication cycle. So uh, static segment is size. Uh, this I divided into the 10 number of uh, slots. Uh, so each slot size is 100 microsecond. Uh, this information I know that. Uh, so uh, one slot size is 100 microsecond. That I am telling uh, 100 macro tick is equal to one slot. So what is uh, one macro tick? Uh, one macro tick is equal to? One millis one microsecond, correct, right? Hundred micro is equal to one. I know that what is a slot of one hundred microsecond is equal to hundred microsecond is equal to one slot. Is equal to hundred. This is a different one slot is equal to I said a hundred macro tick. Macro tick. Hundred macro tick is equal to one slot. I am telling. I know that what is the one slot size is 100 microsecond. So I can say that uh, one macro tick is equal to one microsecond. Uh, 
okay then again so then again i am going to split this uh, macrotic into the microtic so i will represent macrotic in terms of microtic so one uh, for example i am going to represent them uh, okay till this i hope it is clear i'm going to clear this clear all right so i said i will write right here one millisecond is the static static segment then uh, 10 slot equal to one static segment so one slot is equal to uh, 100 microsecond I said uh, one slot is equal to 100 macro tick is equal to 100 microsecond is it clear to this okay then next step so what is micro ticker that's what i'm going to define next day one then i can say that a uh, 100 macro tick is equal to okay then one macro tick is equal to it's very clear that uh, one microsecond correct right 100 macro 100 times of macro tick is equal to 100 microsecond then angle Macro tick and what is the value of the micro tick is equal to one microsecond. So one micro tick is equal to one microsecond angle. Again, I'm going to split this into this. For example, my uh, I already mentioned flex ray communication. If you consider consist of the flex ray communication, you will have the microcontroller section. Microcontroller section so the flex ray controller will be there. Then uh, it's coming to the uh, transceiver transceiver then it's going to the bus this is a structure so the flex ray controller is uh, op should have a clock this clock is generating from the microcontroller coming from the microcontroller uh, usually you can use the crystal oscillators uh, for generating this clock uh, if in, we usually will need a very high frequency so crystal oscillators may not have uh, uh, have that much high frequency range so usually we'll use the pll principle phase lock loop then we will generate a high frequency inside the microcontroller itself so for example the crystal oscillator is generating 20 megahertz uh, usually flex ray communication uh, has to uh, usually above 40 megahertz and 80 megahertz range it is working so i need 80 megahertz so i am using a pll so i will convert this 20 megahertz of crystal oscillator phase range to 80 megahertz then uh, now my flex ray controller clock frequency is 80 megahertz okay so uh, what is the period of this this is my clock so all the nodes in the network will operate with the 80 megahertz crystal frequency or oh, yes no, not crystal frequency 80 megahertz frequency crystal frequency can be something but this is the frequency you are feeding to the flex ray controller all the nodes will have the same 80 megahertz okay uh, yeah all the nodes will have this 80 megahertz yes so uh, now okay so what is the period of this period is equal to 1 by 80 megahertz now i am correlating macrotic and micro now i am going to define the microtic i would say the my, uh, microtic is the uh, smallest unit of time in flex ray communication so smallest unit of time is the clock frequency clock frequency is equal to so one micro tick is equal to one micro tick is equal to one by 80 megahertz 
Yeah, one microtic microtic is the smallest time measurement in a flex telecommunication stuff. So one micro that is the clock frequency you are what you are applying. So one microtic is equal to one by eighty megahertz. Okay. So how many I'm repeating the question, how many microtic available in a one microtic in this particular example? In this particular example, one macrotic is equal to one microsecond. We already have. So to get to one microsecond, eh, uh, how many is required? Eighty microtic is required to get a. Eh? One microsecond right so in this particular example I can say one one macro tick macro tick equal to one micro uh, 80 sorry 80 micro tick so now we have derived the relationship between micro tick Microtic, macrotic, then uh, slot size, then uh, communication cycle. Clear? So, how uh, flux ray clock frequency related to the communication cycle, how flux ray communication cycle length, how flux ray uh, clock is related to the slot size how it is related to the uh, microtic everything is clear so my flex ray clock is equal to the flex ray clock frequency uh, if you know then what is the time period of the flex ray clock that is equal to the one microtic that's what i said eh? microtic is the smallest time unit in a flex ray communication so i hope it's understood for everyone so uh, if you you will see uh, all the parameters timing related parameters are uh, will be represented in terms of macrotics <clears throat> so you know that uh, one macrotic is called 80 macrotics huh? so maybe you can say that uh, this uh, particular slot what is a slot size uh, is equal to 100 macrotic huh? what is uh, our uh, uh, Static segment size is equal to 1000, 1000 microtic. Okay, what is our communication? Uh, it's like 1500 microtic. Everything we can say that 1500 microtic, 1000 microtic. Uh, correct, right? Yes, so everything will be usually represented in terms of macrotic. So, macrotic, then again, if you again go down, you will come to the microtic. Microtic is directly related to the clock frequency. Clear? I hope it is clear. Next, we'll go to the. This is a uh, little bit a tricky concept. Eh? Uh, yeah. Uh, you will not see much explanation about uh, this concept in the internet or Google. Uh, yeah, internet or a YouTube videos. So you will not see much uh, explanation about this topic. And uh, the documents related to this is also. Uh, it's available. I will, I will not say it's. Uh, it is not available. It's available, but it's uh, difficult to understand. You should have some basics, then it will work out. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So now we explained about the microtic, macrotic, uh, static segmenting communication uh, cycle everything we explained right so uh, yeah so if you take a communication cycle you will have a minimum static segment and a network ideal type so now we explained how uh, this communication cycle length is represented in the uh, macro -tickle. 
Yeah, our main topic is how synchronization is doing. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, all the nodes in the network, I already said uh, the sync frames will be available. Sync frames will be sent from the sync node, right? So for example, one, nine, three, uh, five, seven, these are the sync nodes. So these nodes will send the uh, synchronization frame. Okay, right? So all the nodes in the network, they are aware about, I will get a sync frame from node one in this particular time. How that time they are calculating, they have a internal, uh, they have, uh, that, that particular issue will have a, a clock, flux rate clock from that, uh, based on the, that flux rate clock, uh, he flux rate clock is directly related to the micro ticker. He is counting his, his micro tick, micro tick he is counting. So once micro tick reaches to the, as per the defined number of micro, we already defined it. How many number of micro tick is equal to macro tick? Then how many number of macro tick is equal to slot? We already uh, defined. So micro tick counter is there, then macro tick counter is there. So micro tick is counting, counting, counting. And for example, assume that the 80 micro tick is equal, reaches to, we taken uh, one example, 80 micro tick is equal to one macro tick. Then macro tick counter is increment to one. Then similarly, 100 macro tick is equal to the one slot. Slot counter will be incremental one. So he is counting internally based on uh, his uh, clock. He has a clock that is a 80 megahertz frequency. We already explained. Okay, so he will based on this cycle length, micro tick counter is increasing. Cycle uh, number of cycle according to number of micro tick counter is increasing. When micro tick counter is equal to the defined number of uh, micro tick, for we already defined uh, this many number 80 micro 80 micro tick is equal to one macro tick we designed so 80 cycles over then one macro tick counter will increment then again like this 100 macro tick counter increment then one slot counter one uh, one increment will happen in the slot counter then uh, this many slot finish then cycle counter will cycle counter will have a cycle counter will increment one Uh, we know that right in a particular cycle uh, it's divided into slots so this many slot finish means then cycle control so clear so uh, every so uh, there will be a, a counter inside each issue this counter is keep on running so already it's a pre-programmed already this uh, every node is aware about this uh, thing node one will send a from node one, I will get a synchronization message in this particular time. Similarly, from node three, I will get a synchronization message in the particular time. From so on, uh, all these nodes, node three, node one sending a, a synchronization message that will receive by up to two to 15 nodes will receive that as a synchronization. From similarly, except uh, from the node three, all other nodes will receive the synchronization message. So every node is aware about that uh, when I will get a single frame from uh, single nodes. Okay, so assume that uh, okay, node one is sending a synchronization frame. Uh, I'm taking an example of node uh, two. Node one is sending a synchronization frame. Uh, no, uh, node two will receive, node three will receive, everyone will receive. Uh, Assume that a node to know that I will receive the synchronization frame for the micro tick of 1000 micro tick. When my micro tick is equal to when my I'm telling an example, okay, uh, node one is sending a Okay, not one is sending a synchronization frame. Then uh, node two will receive that synchronization. Node, not only node two, all other nodes will receive the synchronization frame. Huh? So node two is aware about that. Uh, I should receive a synchronization from node one at a thousand micro tick. But unfortunately, 
it's not received at 1000 microtic sir node 2 receiving the synchronization from the node 1 at 1200 microtic okay what could be the reason for uh, this uh, okay one reason i hope it's understood that node 1 is uh, sending a synchronization frame node 2 should get this data at 1000 microtic node 2 know that uh, when my uh, microtic uh, counters become 1000 i should get a synchronization from frame from the node 1 but unfortunately it's not getting uh, it's getting at a thousand to when it become thousand two hundred micro ticket so if you compare this difference between the user 200 micro ticket what could be the uh, micro micro ticket okay what could be the reason for this uh, uh, delay after some 200 micro really? one reason maybe this node to uh, node to have a local counter this local counter is counting very fast. Actually, it should 80 megahertz. Huh? One, uh, one by 80 megahertz is equal to one micro ticket. But for example, it's uh, because of the temperature problem or aging issue, whatever it issue, uh, the frequency, fluctuate clock frequency is more. For example, instead of 80, I'm telling an example, 80.1 megahertz. Then uh, frequency increases means uh, time period is decreases. Eh? Time period is decreases means uh, then what will happen? The uh, micro ticks will, uh, it will, the count will, uh, counter will increment very fast compared to the normal counting, right? So uh, node two is uh, a clock. Assume that the node two clock is uh, running uh, frequencies. The node two clock frequency is very high. In that case, uh, there is a possibility to that uh, it can, uh, yeah. Node one is ending in the proper time. Everything is perfect, but because of the node two clock uh, problem, um, you may see thousand two hundred micro ticker at a node two. Is it clear? I'm, I will repeat once again. Node two is receiving a synchronization message from the node one uh, node two is uh, know that uh, i should receive this at a thousand micro ticker but uh, node two is receiving at a thousand two hundred micro ticker there are two reasons or three reasons for this uh, to getting delayed to getting uh, because instead of thousand you are getting as a thousand two hundred first reason node 2 microtic counter is counting very fast if it is if it is counting very fast then 80 megahertz 80 megahertz is the clock 80 megahertz if you suppose it is generating higher frequency then time period is lesser time period is less means then counter increment faster than normal that could be the one reason and second reason uh, node one uh, clock may be slow so slow means uh, node one frequency is less actually it should produce 80 megahertz uh, but it's not producing 80 it's for example it is producing 17.9 17.9 uh, 79.9 for example then uh, the corresponding time period will be larger so node two uh, uh, node, uh, node one macrotic counter is running very s slow so uh, node one also know that uh, i should send uh, send this uh, synchronization at this particular macro microtic so but since it is running with a uh, slow uh, low frequency low frequency means uh, the counter is running very slow uh, there will be a delay in the sending the data from the node one as a result, uh, yeah, you will receive a, a synchronization frame at a node two after some delay. That also another reason is the uh, okay node two uh, clock don't have any problem. Node one clock also may not have, and the network uh, is taking uh, in between the network. Uh, network is have some issues because of that uh, its delay is added in the network. Uh, then it is received.
this could be the three reasons right understood yeah then uh, okay not only node 2 will receive this uh, or other is other uh, nodes also will receive this uh, they will also will cross check like this how much then they will calculate the difference okay uh, okay we cannot estimate with one uh, data now we have three possibility it can be the problem of this uh, it can be the problem of this uh, it can be a problem in the network so we have another uh, node that is a node 3 node 3 is sending the again uh, uh, it's sending a, another synchronization frame in that particular case also if uh, i'm telling another ex uh, okay i'm uh, okay this we said a thousand micro ticket should reserve uh, node 3 sending some synchronization frame eh? node 2 should we be aware should aware that eh, i should receive this uh, uh, synchronization frame at a thousand micro ticket these are the example i'm telling micro ticket but uh, unfortunately it's uh, receiving at a 2200 micro ticket or 2000 2200 micro ticket then you can rule out the problem uh, okay it's a problem we said all node 2 uh, previous case also from the message from the node 1 case also message from previous case what was the previous case uh, node 1 was sending in the uh, synchronization frame eh? in that case node 2 was uh, received this data after 200 micro ticket delay in this case also uh, from uh, node 3 also this node 2 is receiving as a synchronization frame, frame eh? after 200 micro micro ticket delay so then in that case uh, we can rule out the uh problem associated with the node one and did not we can say uh, because in two cases uh, uh node two have the problem for example uh, in this case uh, for example you take it is like uh, this is receiving at a 2000 micro tick actually it has to receive at a 2000 micro tick uh, but it is receiving at a thousand eight hundred micro ticket then it is a uh, still that possibility is there maybe node 2 is correct node 3 or node 1 have problem so that's why we are not limiting with the uh, 2 again we will take some 5 or 6 synchronization then we'll check the similar way so uh, we from this we can reach a conclusion that uh, which one have, will have the uh, problem or uh, how to resolve this okay so i will uh, repeat once again so node one node two node three uh, node four node five okay node one is sending a synchronization frame to node two node 1 is a sync frame sync node node 3 also sync node node 5 also sync node so node 1 is sending a synchronization frame to the node 2 so node 2 is aware of that i should receive this synchronization frame at 2000 micro tick but it's receiving at 2200 micro tick then there is a difference of 200 similarly then it's calculated there it's available there and the uh, node 3 is sending another synchronization frame eh? so in that case uh, for example I, uh, node 2 is aware but that i should receive that 3000 eh? but it's receiving at 3200 then in that case also again 200 micro ticket differences so the probability here there is a problem associated with the uh, node 2 what is the problem this problem may be uh, node 2 clock is uh, running very fast eh? means uh, clock frequency is very high because of that counter incrementing very fast uh, yeah 
because we have seen in both cases the node one is sending case also node three sending case also we have the same problem similarly the node uh, five also sending some that uh, okay this may uh, it's aware of that it should receive at a 5000 micro ticket but it's receiving 5000 so 100 micro ticket difference so you have the different uh, values like this so what you will do is uh, you will not uh, stick, take uh, any fixed particular value you will use a particular algorithm ftm algorithm fault tolerant midpoint algorithm so what is basically is doing is this will sum of this all this value then take the uh, divided with the number of points um, yeah for example five single node is available divided by five so in that base you will arrive value if that value is a positive value then uh, for example you got a average of this uh, take it as a yeah i'm telling example the take the like this five sig nodes are no sig node as a uh, sixth seventh node eighth node is there this seventh also single node eighth also single node is in that is like this so you have the five values then uh, uh, take i'm taking an example like everyone is a uh, 200 200 200 then five times of 200 200 plus 200 plus 200 plus 200 five times of 200 divided by five and that will again you will get a 200 200 micro tick is the value you are getting Okay, so based on this, now you got a received a values of 200 microtica. So this is the deviation you found it. This is, uh, I'm talking only about the uh, node two. Node two is receiving the synchronization message from the various sync nodes. Then uh, node two is uh, estimated the difference between the actual i should what what time i should receive this message and uh, practically how what time i am receiving this message and he found out that this difference then he will uh, find this difference then uh, sum up and take the average this is called fault tolerant uh, midpoint algorithm something okay then uh, okay now you arrive to the values of the 200 micro ticket 200 uh micro tick now you arrive to the values of 200 micro tick okay so what will be the correction action so node to basically what is the problem node to uh, oscillator is uh, uh, running very fast i cannot correct the my oscillator frequency because uh, i don't have any control on it. this changes uh, this behavior is maybe because of the temperature it's maybe because of the aging issue whatever it is i don't have any control to correct it but what i will do is so i found a difference of uh, 2000 micro ticker so i will uh, re reassign my macro tickers for example earlier uh, one macro ticker macro ticker i consider as a for example uh, 800 micro tick 800 yeah maybe you take it as a 800 micro tick is equal to one macro tick that was my earlier assignment okay then you got a tooth uh, then what you will do now you will add this 800 plus 200 thousand micro tick is equal to one macro this is your new assignment so what is basically doing basically your uh, oscillator is running very fast so uh, your counter is very uh, running very fast so uh, earlier it was uh, it is reaching one macro tick very fast because your uh, micro tick counter is counting very fast so uh, to compensate that what i have done i reassigned the uh, my assignment date. Uh, my definition I am changing. Earlier definition was uh, 800 micro tick is equal to one micro tick. Now I am assigning 1000 micro tick is equal to uh, one micro uh, micro tick. So, ineffectively, uh, earlier uh, take it as a yeah, 
I hope it is clear. I will clear this toy. Okay. If we come to the previous example, we define uh, one macro tick is equal to 80 micro tick. This was our assign. Assume that from the fault, tol mid fault uh, tolerant midpoint algorithm, from that you got a value of 20 micro tick. Then you will add this to this. Then one macro tick is equal to now 100 micro tick. You will do this correction. Next cycle again, this uh, you will cross check the, in the same way. Uh, then if you found further deviation, then you will uh, add or subtract it. Sometimes if this uh, fault term, uh, fault to tolerant midpoint algorithm, may, it can make a minus 20. In that case, you will subtract it. It will become 60 microtic is equal to one microtic. I hope it is understood. So basically, uh, we will, you will adjust the macrotic assignment value, macrotic definition. Earlier you uh, assigned one macrotic is equal to 80 micro ticker. Now uh, for, you got the from the fault tolerant midpoint algorithm. Uh, you are this particular no, ECU node two uh, clock uh, micro tick counter is counting very fast. So always you have a difference of uh, positive difference. So you found this average value and you came to a value of 20. So you added it that way, then you can correct this problem. So in that way, uh, it's correcting its clock. Uh, it's synchronizing with the uh, other nodes. I hope it is clear. Yeah. So the static segment, the synchronization frame, sync frames will send in the uh, static segment only. Uh, this how how to identify the sync frame is we already discussed in the static segment deck. Uh, there will be a sync indicator bit will be there in the uh, header of the sync frame. So if that bit set means it's a particular it's that particular frame is a sync frame. So all the issue will be aware about it. I will receive the sync frame in this particular time interval. Okay. So that's all about the synchronization in the flexible protocol. Uh, hope it's clear for everyone. Uh, yeah. We'll come up with the next topic. Uh, in next section okay thank you we'll close for the day yeah thanks